Kyle asks, what a disappointment Adams and Kamara have been. Most of the first and second round were flat out busts. Not really a question, but can we just talk about this for a second? Next year's draft is going to be wild. Kyle, it's fucking incredible that you just asked that because today's episode is going to be filled with all of our busts. As we're looking into the first week of the playoffs, um, well, this will be technically going to the second week, but we're going to we're going to talk about all the guys that were the most disappointing. And if you uh, have these guys on your team, you probably don't even have to worry about fantasy football. Thus, you're probably not even watching the show. So we might have actually planned this poorly looking in hindsight. But uh, stay tuned for this. Justin, now that the fantasy season's almost over with a couple weeks left, if you made it there, who's in everyone's top five picks for next year? In no order, I got C-Mac, Dalvin Cook, Saquon, Zeke, and Kamar or Jacobs. Also, the Barstool DK model I was talking about last week would be an all-in-one site for big dogs content and a spot to run Mox Fantasy Football League's thoughts on both. Uh, real quick, just to get to the latter part of that question, it's a very good question. Me and Animal were actually just talking about this pre-show about like somehow consolidating where our audience is on a platform like that, but it's very tough to like pivot you guys over from Patreon to like a forum. Um, also, all of the technical back end work in order to have like mock drafts and fantasy football leagues hosted on a site like that. I don't even know. Yeah, well, you'd have to hire like a guy. I would have to hire a back end website developer. Of, yeah, um, so there's so much into that. That's maybe something more longer term this upcoming year. Maybe I could like partner with a site or something, but that's uh, that'd be something much further down the road. But let's talk about real, let's talk about this real quick. Top five picks for next year. I mean, we did the mock draft what like three weeks ago. Were you doing the first three rounds mm -hmm. or something? Something like that. It's funny how quickly things change because so many guys we put there would like just be out of the conversation now. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's pretty spot on. Like C Max still going yeah, to top five. Yeah, it's going to stay with the running back. So let's do it right now. So C Max the one. Cook is probably the 102. Where are you going to throw Henry at the 103? Yeah. Probably. Henry's the RB3 right now in fantasy points per game. I mean, I don't see why not. I still would probably go elsewhere. Like, obviously, Henry has proven me wrong on about 37 different levels this year. I just still find it hard to buy into a guy who does not catch passes. You know what I mean? Like, it's it, it's hard for me to really buy into that. Nah. Snacks, anytime you want to contribute. <laughs> nah. Anytime you want to contribute. I was waiting for his rebuttal. Just, um, guy, I don't put... No, I can't. What's gonna, Who's your 103 next year? Barkley. Barkley? Yes. Yeah. I think full health, I'd probably go back to Barkley again, too. Full health. I'm sure they'll have a new offensive system. Probably one that actually gets him open. I think that in will space. matter. That will matter. Who comes in? Shermer can't get him out. Like, what if Mike? At, what if Mike McCoy comes in? <laughs> the <laughs> offensive coordinator. You could. You could. You could. You could kill me. You would. Would you switch fan bases? No. Never. That's incredible. I would never. Uh, and then you know, then Zeke would be four, and I. I don't. Would, would you go back to Zeke? I feel like. Yeah. I, oh I yeah. I would, Zeke. Yeah. I mean, he's still been very productive this, this season. Yeah, he's Isn't been bad. I probably, I I'm thinking Michael Thomas five. I, I would. Yeah, I wouldn't take Jacobs top five. Jacobs, that's too early. I would go yeah. with the the elite tier wide receiver, like you said. I'd probably take like the, I'll probably take MT. Yeah, Michael Thomas. Yeah, so I think it's probably around the C Mac, Dalvin Cook, Barkley. I mean, maybe Michael Chubb. Thomas is in there. I no. know what happens depends what happens Hunt. with Hunt. Dude, Chubb is so good. Depends what happens. He is with so Hunt. good. So good. If uh, if Hunt is gone and it's just Chubb and like fucking. Dearness Johnson or whoever the hell they yeah. had back there, then, then yeah, I would I, think about I would think about Chubb again in like the top five. But if Hunt's back there again for whatever reason, then he's definitely it. gonna be out. But yeah, that's probably around the consensus. I think Henry makes his way into that conversation. Michael Thomas does, Zeke, uh, Barkley, those back end guys. If y'all wanna uh, submit some questions for the Q and A as well as join the live stream every Saturday, get my waiver wire article, my weekly rankings for the playoffs. There's two weeks left, people. Uh, plus, we'll be putting out a lot of exclusive content throughout the off season. Everything fantasy football, patreon.com slash B D G E B D G E B D G E. Hey, Scotty boy, hit that intro. What's cracking, big dopes? Welcome, bike, to the contaminated dungeon. This is the Fade the Public podcast where myself, Nicholas, Animal, and snacks do our best to fade the public. Uh, I don't know if this was a great weekend <laughs> for the brand. The public might have might have took a shit on our chests. We're gonna recap everything. We're gonna, we're gonna go over what we mean by that because a lot snacks of dumps. Is over there. Snacks is over there sitting with his money stacks. I don't know where you got that from because we we took a lot of L's. Well, this is my bagels and locks winnings this year, and um, not this week. Well, no, it's not true. We'll I could see. break even. Okay, so today's episode, what we're going to do is we're going to recap our E-Town Get Down League because things are getting fucking tight. interesting. And tight. I will say, I will say, 
With that Robert Woods touchdown, I officially locked up first place. Most points in the league, two fucking years running. I need to bring home the chip. Then what is Steve talking about? I think he's saying, like, you won the money. Oh. Baby, it's yours. Oh, baby, I didn't see that. I just saw the... Damn, Stevie. Good for you, man. I'm really happy. I'm, I'm, oh, yeah. I don't think you are, but we're going to recap and, and, and tell you why he's not actually happy for me. And he's a fake and he's a snake. And that's what fucking animal does. He, he transforms into a bear when he's angry. He transforms into a snake when he's depressed over there. And then we're going to get into our top busts. We're actually going to go you know, into more depth on, on guys that we drafted, whether it's first, second, fourth, fifth. What are you unplugging the audio over there? Uh, I thought you were unplugging the fucking wires, you cunt. I want this fucking podcast to be over with. So, Whoa! <laughs> so all of the guys that really disappointed this year in fantasy football, we're going to run through that. And then we got a little uh, special section we, for y'all. We the Herd of Goats is bike. Officially bike. We're talking about the things we hate most about football now these might be overall general like rules in nfl football everything these, these might be fantasy football related things these might be very nuanced things I, one of mine is fucking an absurdly nuanced operation within a fan, uh, football game so we're gonna do a herd of goats of our most hated things about football in general and it was very difficult to just pick four I, you Each. fucking ran through that in about two seconds. No, I'm saying I have like 20 more. Oh, yeah. You had a lot. I saw that. <laughs> nope, I've <laughs> I was, never I seen was you write that much. <laughs> yeah, well, I have yeah. a, there's like a lot of like little ones that I would definitely throw in there, but I don't know if they would, you know, make my my top four. Well, yeah, that's, that was there's the a top lot of, part. Like, to, like, one of, like one of yours is that is something I could probably think of like five instances like that, that it would, you know, yeah. it'd drive me crazy. Yeah. All right. So that's going to be our herd. Let's recap the E-Town Get Down. Basically, going into this week, Stevie... Do you want to end with that or see where we're at based on, you know what I mean? Yeah, you know what? We'll it's end with Etown. It'll because probably be halftime. It's because, not going to be a huge difference, but it could. Because Animal is still in the playoff contention. I was just going to start with me, Stevie 2 Chains, and Shane basically locked up the first three seeds. There's one more playoff spot open. It's between Animal and Jason. So Animal and Jason are playing each other. Whoever wins is in in that fourth seed or possibly third, you know, whatever. Whoever winning in basically for those two, it is. They both it's have players going in the Sunday night football game right now, so we'll try to hold that off as long as we can to give you updates. But as you could see, with Animal downing the whiskey, it's it's not going very well for him. <laughs> yeah, I'm, you don't know. We don't know it yet, but I lost. I see. I you want to hold hands for this? I yeah. disagree. I think you're gonna win. Are you praying for me? I'm not gonna pray. I'm just let's just all uh, hope for an animal win on three. I just got a uh, I just got a question on Twitter. Let's just let's just answer it randomly, okay? I love that I improv, baby. Uh, his his name is at xxx stream chubby. That's really whoa, whoa 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 whoa. Is he a porn developer? Is is his Avi is just a small dog. It looks like George's dog, like Bella. Oh. He says, hey, Nick, I just watched a video on keeper leagues from y you last year. My league mates want to make our league a keeper league now. What is a normal cutoff time for managers to give their one keeper for next season? Um, so we always do it the week before our draft. So we draft on Labor Day Monday, which is usually right before the first week of the season kicking off. So we have a rule where one week prior to draft day is when you would have to declare your keepers to your commissioner. Mm -hmm. I get a lot of questions throughout the summer. People are doing it early, like we have to pick our keepers now. And that I would hate that. At that point, like if you, you have to pick you don't your really keepers, know the circumstances. Yeah, exactly. you, no you don't idea. know who's the starter, who's what, where, who's going to break out. Yeah, there's a few camp. obvious ones you could, you know, do. Yeah, you might have an easy one, but you know, there's some, there's ones where you might have like you had a like tough, for instance, like one to choose. You I had have between carry on, ones, but like in the you, you like I went back and forth a hundred times throughout the summer. Like I would ask you guys that like every week. I'd be like, oh, yeah. I, I like carry on, I like Aaron Jones, but by the end of the summer, it was easily Aaron Jones for me. You know what yeah. I mean? So I th I think like the earlier you do it. The, the stupider it is. It's just like, you're just... It just doesn't make sense. You're just hoping you're getting lucky at that point. Right. Why wouldn't you wait until, like you said, a week before draft day? Yeah. It doesn't make any sense. So if you do it a week before, everyone in your league still knows who you're who you're drafting so they can also prepare, um, or who you're keeping so they can also prepare in their drafts. And, uh, and, and I think it gives you proper time to account for injuries, account for depth chart moves, account for rookies, free agents, things like that. So we always do it one week prior to draft day. Thank you for the question. Mr. David Stutz Extreme Chubby. Great uh, handle, by the way. All he's right, he's, talk about he's big time into porn. Let's talk about, yeah, I mean, you like where else would you come up with that name? Great segue. He's into porn. Let's talk about bust. Boom! But I'm, 
shit. I'm not mad Ooh. at that. I ain't mad at that snacks. Segway snacks. Segway mm-hmm. snacks. He's back, baby. Segway snacks is back. Segway snacks is back. Segway snacks is back. You know who's not bike? Antonio Brown. Still no. not biking no. the NFL. When is he going to step foot back on a field? Is He'll be, be in New England probably before week 17. Yeah? That offense is so. bad. How many com- okay, how many conversations do you think go on between Brady and someone in the front office about Antonio Brown? Daily. He's begging for it. You think? I don't think Be- so. To- the offense is so bad. Did you see the... the Nobody tw- gets open. Edelman's the only guy that can open. They're going to key on him. Second half of the game, and he- he's useless. Did you see the Twitter post from Dan Orzlowski, uh talking about with Tom Brady and how he doesn't trust his wide receivers and shit? Oh, yeah. It was really good. That was It was very good breakdown analysis. He annoys the hell out of me, but he's really good. The only person that Brady trusts at this point is Edelman. That's why he targets him 48 times a game. Yeah. So like, If you're I, only I, trusting one guy and targeting one guy 50 times a game, it's never going to work. And it, could, it, could pretty, work, it could work if they had a run game, but they well, don't. They don't yeah, have that. Yeah, right. Exactly. exactly. And it's pretty evident that it hasn't worked. So... So I think you can't trade for anybody. Yeah, I think Brady wants Antonio Brown bad. I don't really know the logistics behind it because I feel like Brown still got to get cleared. But it's not just like straight up like the Patriots like just sign him right. Yeah, Yeah, I don't. I don't know the back end with the NFL. If just I, I don't know any of those contract issues and everything too. Just a segue here from a business standpoint. If anyone is a lawyer or legal, you know, in legal advice, like right here, this is. You talk about breaking into an industry and doing something different from a different angle. Think about the doctors right now that are breaking into the fantasy industry. They're literally just doctors, just like every other doctor. All they did was say, we specialize in fantasy football. If there was like three to five lawyers who all they literally did was talk about fantasy football law shit on Twitter, (laughs) you blow up because there's not a market for it. That's the shit you got to be thinking about if you want to build a brand. How much is there of that though? What legal shit? Yeah, I mean, if you're just the go-to guy on Twitter, like, oh yeah, yeah, blow up, one you know, guy, some team, will even wanna, if there's one thing like this, Antonio Brown, you could be signed by like ESPN like tomorrow if yeah. you if you became the guy for that. But yeah. I feel like no one ever knows what's going on. It's just us being like, oh, I don't really actually know what's going on, right? Like, right. You know what I mean? It's also very difficult. Like with injuries, I think it's easier because you kind of get reports and whatnot. Mm-hmm. You could see it. But with stuff like that, you have to look up kind of the, tough. You have to look into the doctor. You know what I'm saying? Though. No, no, no. I know. You got to think outside the box. Like it's that all a, the time. You get that niche and go with it. Absolutely, right. I, I completely agree. I'm just saying, probably a little bit more difficult. But you work your tail off, and yeah. So a lot of people drafted Antonio Brown in probably late second, early third round. He was so risky going into the season. Yeah. He was a guy on all three of our do not we draft list not. for sure. And it went back and forth. I remember uh, on one of the last videos I put out right before the summer ended. He was on my top do not draft wide receivers list. And then people were like, you're an idiot. And then he got cut. And I was like, yeah, what now? And then he got signed by the Patriots. And they were like, yeah, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, what, 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 what now? now? <laughs> yeah. And then he got cut again. I was like, whoa, 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 whoa what now, motherfucker? I, I guess I get the last laugh. But Antonio Brown, obviously a terrible pick. Now we have another Steelers wide receiver and another Diva wide receiver. We have OBJ and we have Juju. These are Fuck guys. OBJ. <laughs> Fuck OBJ. So, uh, yeah, OBJ is more of a. Like, a pussy? Yeah, like that that one you can like kind of actually blame on like him and his performance in the team like the Juju one. Yeah, Juju's definitely time. a bust. He lost All right. Let, let's, but let's, yeah, there's let's more talk to that. About this. Let's talk about this for like not only this year but also like next year cuz some of these guys are going to bust this year for circumstances like Juju and you're still going to be confident in drafting them next year, yes. right? Mm-hmm. Not saying him, but like I want to gauge yeah, your guys' yeah. confidence level. So, OBJ, we have Baker, Mayfield and OBJ on this list. We say Baker cuz at one point in the season or in the off season, I saw people, one, were like, he's going to be the QB. They were doing like yeah. bold prediction. He's going to be the QB, QB one, one this year. Yeah. He was drafted legitimately. His ADP was was top five for fantasy <laughs> at one point during the summer. And I was just like, yo, th- there's no, even if he has a big step up from last year, mm-hmm. like you're looking at like a 4,300, 30 touchdown yeah, season, which this- is good, but it's not like anything you want to go nuts about. Baker, huge bust because the offense was just a massive that, disappointment. Their coaching, yeah. Freddie Kitchens, is really bad. Right, They, and they it- don't do anything well. So, so with OBJ, I mean, he's been obviously stellar when he's on the field. Now he's coming out and he's going to be getting sports uh, hernia surgery, surgery throughout yeah. the offseason. How much of this do you think was like the the fuckery going on in Cleveland? And how much of this do you think was the injury? Like, is, is he going to even well, be in just, Cleveland next year? Because we're seeing all the reports from incarcerated uh, Bob and shit yeah. that he's not going to be in Cleveland. I would definitely say it's a part of like his the system. There's too many mouths to feed there. Yeah, it's not the talent. We but know Odell's a great really, receiver. But when you're that really talented, fed, like you, right, you get open. Receiver. Look at Eli. Everybody, everybody shot problem. on Eli for how many there's, years there's now? Play o- calling, Odell, all that stuff. Odell Beckham was a Hall of Famer playing with Eli. Yeah, but so play calling, all that stuff matters. I, I understand. You think the Giants play calling and the quarterback play has been any good for the, the last six years? The Giants had literally no one else, so they just, they, here's, a, here's the ball, Odell. Okay, here's but it's the not like Jarvis Landry. It's not like Jarvis Landry's Calvin Johnson. They did the same thing last year with Saquon. 
he's kind of been Calvin. <laughs> and now when he goes to the Browns, that was a bad example. <laughs> you got Nick Chubb, you got Kareem Hunt, who wasn't there most of the season, but and then you got okay, Jarvis but, Landry. Okay, for, for what you gave up a first round pick, he's a he's a, a quote unquote generational talent. And he's not getting open enough to get the ball. He's not taking slants to the house oh, like yeah, he always would. So maybe the injury's there. But of course, coincidence. Now he's been sucking, and we hear all these rumors that he's going to get traded. Now he's got the sports hernia. Yeah, fucking coincidence. He's, oh, listen, so, I'm so Odell funny Beckham. timing that when I've that comes out. Always been a Odell's he overrated. Sucks. Maybe he oh, just he sucks. Suck. He's, just, he's, he's overrated. So he's still number eleven in targets. Number eleven in targets. With that number eleven in targets, he is twenty second in receptions. Bro. He is he's a bust. Twenty second in yards. He only has two touchdowns on the year, so he's been way way underperforming. He was going thought. late first in right. twelve man leagues. Late, yeah, late first. first. So t- talking about next year, a bounce back. Say say let's let's go like this. <laughs> Freddie Kitchens is out. Uh, maybe Todd Munkin moves the head coach. He starts calling the plays. Shaker's still there. Odell's still there. Cream Hunt leaves or whatever. Uh, Odell, like what, where are you going to be looking? You think to draft him next year? Uh, Late second. Late second. I'd go yeah. early, thir- early mid third. I would wait to third. He's with Antonio Brown with me where I want to, I want to reserve those it. first two picks. I right. want to reserve those first two picks who I know are going to be cornerstones. Absolutely. It, you like upside, could, but I like him later in the We drafts. could very well see. And listen, honestly, I don't, you know, a lot of preseason hype is, is just that hype. And what you see is not always what you get, but new system, oh. new offense coordinator, all this and Baker's playing well. And we see it in. The preseason that he's dominating again, he's going to skyrocket. But for me, I'm not trusting it. I'd love to see him get traded to like San Francisco. That's I would love that. Yeah, because that's probably the best offensive system in football right now, right? Yeah, bar none. I mean, look at Sanders. Look at Debo. Both crazy eating. Crazy, right now. and then yeah, you so, put Odell in there. Yeah. So yeah, for me, he's he's a uh, he's an early third rounder, uh, just because I tend to. Uh, stick with the safer side of things. I think what I'm drafting earlier on in drafts. So, I yeah. ain't drafting him. OB, OBJ has been, yeah, I mean, Personal. Yeah, I, I, I figured probably just land on your do not draft list. I'm probably not going to draft him because he wasn't, I mean, I didn't want to draft him this year, so. But let's talk about, let's talk about Juju Smith-Schuster because yeah. he was going around the same exact spot that OBJ was. A lot of people probably had to make the decision between one or the other. Now, Juju, like, my concern with Juju is, I mean, he was so, so good last year. Yes, he was. This year, like he wasn't, he didn't start off hot with Big Ben. I know Big Ben was only on the field. Played a game for like and a half. Yeah. Game and a half. Um, my problem is like the same thing with Odell. It's like if you're really that talented, because we're seeing Deontay Johnson, we're seeing James Washington have big games. And obviously Juju's See, been like, hurt dude, for a little uh, bit. Corlin Sutton with three different quarterbacks. That's what I'm saying. And it was DeAndre Hopkins. DeAndre Hopkins is a different animal, but he had I mean, nobody Juju, before Deshaun Watson. The trajectory of DeAndre. I mean, yeah, both of them have I know. Similar he size took, and athleticism. He took a massive, massive also, fall. Yes, it's like so all that matters. But if you like watch these games, like a lot of these Steelers games, they're all defensive games where it's like they're running the ball, they're punting. Now they're playing defense. Well, yeah, they're, like, they're game they're, managing. Not, they're yeah, game like, managing. They're not chucking like they were with Ben. Ben was throwing the ball forty-seven times. And Ben, you know? for all intents and purposes, it looks like he's going to come back next year. Yeah, yeah. I, like, there's assume, been no let's retirement talk. Well, let's let's assume Ben is back at full strength. Like seeing what we saw this year, Juju not commanding targets, even though it was defensive team, even though you know it was with backup quarterbacks. Like, is there a concern? He like, didn't help himself out. Here's the thing. Juju's going to get hyped up enough again to the point where he's probably going to get drafted around exactly where he did this year. Yeah. I think he's going to be like early a mid second, early mid second rounder. Are you going to be willing to pull the trigger? No, there? no, I won't either. I'm not going to, I'm not going to get that cute and do it. No. He was someone I loved going into the year, but at this point, yeah, he is, um, he's probably falling into that OBJ zone yeah, for me. I got to see probably it. Probably early third I got to see it. Yeah. So it, it scares me. He's so young and he's an elite talent he for sure. He is very talented. But th- I'll be honest, this year scared me a little bit. And we don't really know what we're getting from uh, from Big Ben out there. So we have Juju. We have all those diva wide receivers. Uh, I mean, along with like just going down the wide receiver list, we have Brandon Cooks as well. Who oh, is, God. It was a combination of that yeah. Rams offense. But like we've also seen Cooper Cup go nuts. We've seen Robert Woods the last like month of the season go yeah. nuts. Brandon Cooks has never hit that stride. No. And yeah, he, he's just he, like his the, role in that offense is just kind of like a Even non- before the concussions, before he got yeah. hurt, he wasn't doing anything. Exactly. Yeah. He's bust do you think it was what, like what, what though because I, I think the biggest story of the underrated storyline of this offseason was losing their uh pieces of that offensive line oh, yeah, well, so the, exactly they, the they, offensive they, line that Sean McVay offense the last year has been built on play action well, and they couldn't exactly. establish exactly. it they exactly could, and they, yeah and they it, couldn't establish it they can't Jared run the ball under pressure yep. they terrible. need to be able to run the ball they need to, be able to get the play action going and then you can get those big shots downfield to cooks and they haven't been able to do that this season right. so so are we are a we lot out of combinations? Are we out on because he's I'm, so young yeah. and he's been so good? For, I've been, been so out on him for a while so because he's been like eleven hundred yards for he's like four or five years. Too many concussions, he gets hurt. He, I just the, don't want. And that's, that's the thing that scares me. I don't the most, want the concussions long term. Right, yeah. dynasty. I feel like he's a buy low because he's still relatively very young. Uh, of course, and you got to figure if he's with 
St. Louis, I think there's enough smart people in that organization <laughs> and on the sideline. Uh, whatever. Los Angeles. F- ridiculous that they had to move again, play away games in Los Angeles. But health-wise is really my major concern because we talked about it in the offseason. He was a guy I personally loved coming in. I know you loved him just because yeah. we knew what we were getting. Just like we were talking about with Odell and who and Juju, where are we going to take them? We don't really know what we're going to get. We knew what we were getting with, with Cooks every year. And it's been a catastrophe. Yeah, Cooper Cup has been like absolutely elite for the most part. Cooks just fell to the wayside. And, and it was like they were so good at spreading the ball around and making sure all three of them yeah. ate. And it, I, I guess like as fantasy owners, we should have known that like, when do you ever see three wide receivers like really eat top 15 numbers like that? At least we should have been like more cautious. Like most of them are going to fall back to like top top twenty, top twenty five, yeah, and maybe not. I guess. Well, I think we kind of were a little bit off of cup. We thought like oh, Woods. I, yeah, yeah, I was off like, of yeah. cup. I Woods. I still liked Woods. For yeah, sure. exactly. I thought Woods was going to be the guy to own that cup, offense. We, yeah, yeah, it's true. In reverse order. I think we yeah. did. Yeah. We we. we uh, I like. I love. We Brandon all Cooks. kind of fucked up on. I like Brandon Cooks out of the the best out of the three of them. No, yeah. I like Woods the best, but well, that's fine. Either either way, I mean, Cup is the he was the, yeah. Well, we saw that with Jared Goff before Cup got hurt. Like that's his that's his that's his baby. Yeah. yeah. So uh, Brandon Cooks he fell down quickly. Uh, we won't get into Corey Davis. He's just the, it's just, he's, he's just been not irrelevant. Good at football. He's been irrelevant. He, he's not good at football. And AJ Brown is just an alpha in every sense of the word. We have Marquez Valdez Scantling who. I really liked coming into the year. It was yeah. another. It was another thing where it's like yeah. Jared Goff and that offense. You thought was going to be dominant enough that whoever was there, the stats were going to spill over right. into him. But the Green Bay Packers offense has been. Yeah, run, I also thought run, they run, were, run, yeah. run, run. I didn't run. think they were going to run the ball as much as they are. And then there's also like you saw like the preseason reports. Like in the beginning of the year, we had like the one where Aaron Rodgers is like, uh, MVS is really running hard. He looks like he's breaking his routes. Like I see a difference in him this year. And like you see that, you're like, oh, MVS is going to have a huge year. And he sucks. Yeah, MVS. I was high on him too. I thought, especially with the probably the extra attention going towards Devontae Adams, that he would loosen up a little bit, but just never happened. Yeah, and it's crazy because it's not even like behind Devontae Adams, any other wide receiver is eating. It's Mm-mm. all the running backs. Well, so I guess like less than to take away from there is the coaches really fucking matter. Yeah. The coaches really, really matter. And well, that's the, that's Every the problem with new with coaches, lesson. though. We don't when know. You, when you're trying to predict like how this coach is going to operate their offense and like, I think they don't even know to an extent until they actually get out there and see how it works. Yeah. Like they have an idea of how they want to run the, the, the offense, run the team, but until you know how effective it is, you know, effective it is, you're not gonna not gonna know. Yeah, I don't know if of, they wanted to run the ball. The mud. Yeah. I don't know if they wanted to run the ball as much as they are, but they saw how well it was working and they just the, stuck they're with also it. Pass, I mean, they talked about it in the offseason how they wanted to pass the ball to the running backs over and over and over mm-hmm. again. And they they've been doing that. Yeah, no, yeah. the running backs have been touches involved. everywhere, every way. So yeah, M V S is definitely on that list. And for moving over to uh, like running backs. There are a lot of them. Uh, we also had Josh Gordon on that list for obvious reasons. He's been fucking trash. Because everybody just blows him up. It'll be the year 2030, and he'll be coming off a of suspension. It'll be like, and... Do you remember that 2013 year? God. Like, yo, that, that's were... what drives me nuts. nuts. I 20, think about it every I mean, time. 2013, he was awesome. It's 20 fucking 19. Why was anybody expecting? This is going to be the conversation about David Johnson for the next three yeah. years. I think I saw someone on Twitter, someone that's like big in fantasy football. Like, I hope this is the consensus idea of David Johnson next year, saying that like he can't wait to draft him early because no one's going to want him. And I'm like, bro, okay, good luck. If like no this, one, if no one wants him, then you don't have to draft him early. This is, I was like, <laughs> this is this is just not it. So talking about David Johnson, RB bust. Like, yes, big time. He was good in the beginning of the year because he was catching so many passes, but like it was only because of that. They were scheming ways to get him open. He was so fucking bad on the ground. Really bad. The offensive line was just bad. He was getting hit, but he was not making anyone miss either. And this, I mean, this was shit I was saying all, all offseason. And everyone was just like, yeah, you know what? Like, it'll work because he's going to catch passes. And he did. But then, like, as soon as he got hurt, he came back. And he's just, he's nothing now to that team. So, yeah, he's um, irrelevant. I mean, probably get, ah, oh, you can't cut him. They paid him, huh? Yeah, they're going to have to keep him yeah, next no. year. Um, so anywhere. David Johnson, that's such a bad contract. That's such a bad contract. And talking about bad contracts, we have another one in Le'Veon Bell. So Le'Veon oh, Bell. well, we called this one. Oh, excuse yeah, me. we, we all kind of stayed away. Yeah, we, this was just not a guy. I mean, I mean, let, let, let's talk about like the lessons learned from all these guys like Le'Veon Bell, David Johnson, both in the same situation. They're on shitty teams. Shitty offensive lines for Le'Veon Bell. He had a shitty offensive coach. I mean, right. And but we said that that Adam Gase never utilizes his running backs. Yeah, we, not correctly at least. Not, yeah. Well, right, not correctly. We said that going in. The volume was the there, but flare. everyone everyone wants to talk about volume is king. It is to an extent. Volume is king when volume is in the right place. Yeah, well, it's got to be moving in a forward direction. You can't just be getting. If you have ten screen passes, that all go fucking. Caleb Balaj had volume. He got twenty carries, gained well, exactly. twenty yards. Like it, it, volume is. It's not. 
it's good in a sense, but if they're in a bad scheme, a bad system, it it's doesn't not always matter. translate to you know opportunity like right. you would think it would. Yeah, right. I hope I can get some clips of us talking about Levin Bell because I almost remember saying like we had the exact right thing. It was literally like I feel like he's going to get a ton of volume, but he's going to average like three point four yards per carry, not get a lot of goal line yeah. touches, and I don't think he's going to catch the eighty passes that most people think. Right. I think he's going to be more around the forty five. Like it was fucking spot on what we said. Pretty and much, it was in, during an episode. I know somebody commented or maybe he was tweeting at me about Le'Veon Bell. Oh I'm no, like, I know who exactly you're talking. Come about. back to every I'm, every week he would comment. I'm going to come shit. back to this when Bell is yeah. a top three player. I'm like, okay, yeah, yeah, we'll see. You come back to it. Yeah, but guess what? On. I'm going to fucking do. I'm going to go back to it. We're going. We're going bike bike. And I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna, I'm gonna skull fuck. <laughs> you're not, skull you're not gonna fuck. find shit. Um, okay, so we also have. So says you. You're not. Why? You're it's not, on the fucking interweb. You're not gonna go back and look. Hey, for animal, it. you want to take this one? Uh, there was yeah. a guy that was picked uh, number one overall in the E Town Get Down. Yo. Oh. oh yeah. I forget what his uh, name is. Alvin Kamara. <laughs> I'm not mad. Let's go. Alvin, Alvin Kamara. Not a, oh no. You took oh, he Kamara. didn't get picked you number one Kamara. overall. Alvin Kamara, huge bust. It's right. Alvin Kamara, huge bust. Why don't you tell us some? Yeah. Why don't you tell us some? I'm some, gonna. I'm actually. I'm actually gonna listen to this one. Thing things about it. I mean, there's not much to say other than he's a huge bust. He was a guy that was drafted top three overall by majority of everybody who plays not the fantasy. Smart people. By majority of everybody who plays fantasy football, he was a top three pick, and he looks like he doesn't even want to play football anymore. He's RB ten right now in points per game, which is kind of but it's crazy. Like, and he only has two touchdowns on the year. Yeah, which exactly. is nuts. He's weak, caught sixty four passes back here, huh? I mean, yes, Christian. The McCaffrey's problem is like he just looks like when he's out there like running, he looks like he doesn't want well, to play see, football. And that, that's we the concerning part. That's weird. Yeah. yeah, like why? I, do you think that high ankle sprain he suffered a while ago just didn't heal yet, and he's dealing with the same well, thing? Well, I as think, this this, I, think thing? I was just going to say I think it's the same thing because Barkley. I watch every fucking play the Giants play. Yeah, he looks timid. He just doesn't have the spring. Yeah. He doesn't have, have the, the spring. Well, I said there were so um, many plays last year. Excuse me, I'm sorry. One second. So many plays last year where a Kamara and and a, and a Barkley were breaking tackles left and right in open space. They they're look getting, like they, the most elusive. They're, get, they're the getting pulled yeah, down yeah. by guys, uh, cornerbacks that weigh as much as I do. Yeah. That, didn't happen last year. Weird, yeah. There's, so there's something off with those two, and uh, I will go back to them in a second next year because here's the oh, thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah Th- this is the kinda... difference between the guys like this and David Johnson. Like you saw this from David Johnson last year when you're watching him, you're like, he looks like a terrible running back. Yeah. Problem was, David Johnson was already like 27. Right. So you're like, he's, he's older. He, yeah. Once you're past that peak age and you start looking bad, it's because you're no longer the young athletic guy you were. Yeah. When you have Kamara and you have Barkley who are like 22, 23. They're going to get right. You don't give up on those guys. Yeah, you don't give up on those guys. They're going to get right. So those are guys I would go right back to in the meantime. So we have Alvin Kamara. We have Saquon Barkley on that list. We have Sonny Michelle, who was in the right place at the right time. He just didn't come through. I'm, I, I guess it, it was a talent thing. Like, I loved him coming yeah, out of so Georgia. Yeah, he was fucking amazing in I Georgia. loved him coming out of Georgia. And in this, in this Patriots offense, I mean, their run game has just been absolutely fucking... They completely changed their entire, like, offense. They ran from, like, the... Running the ball. Yeah. Well, remember last year the in entire, the playoffs, the Super Bowl, Michelle looked so good. Yeah, so well, that was their entire year, offense was running thinking, the ball. okay, same thing. Yeah. Brady's older. They're going to run the ball with Michelle. She's their first-round pick. They don't waste first-round picks on running backs if they're not going to utilize them. But at this point, you got it. It's a talent thing. Yeah. yeah. It has to be. You get it's, James so Devlin getting more great. carries than him. He looked great last year, too. He did, especially, to, especially towards the end. So that recency buys had everybody all goo-goo gaga over him. Yep. Last year, he had one, two, three, four, four games in the regular season, two in the playoffs. So six games overall of 100-plus rushing yards. This year, he has yet to go over 91 it's rushing crazy. yards in a single game. He just doesn't look good. Guess guess uh, where he ranks right now, running backs, fantasy-wise, overall? 15. 21. Wow. Higher. 28. 27. Ah, motherfucker. 27 overall. If you're in points per game, he's even lower. He's down at like fucking like 39. But obviously there's some guys that have only played like four or six games. But that just tells you around, you know, where he's at. So that was that was like a huge bust. Obviously touchdown you didn't cup. have to you didn't have to um develop what'd you say? I'm sorry. I didn't mean touchdown Cooper Cup. Really? A yeah. big one? A big one? I'm about 15, 20 yards. Because I'm playing against Scott right now. Because by the way, we have the go fade me playoffs going on too. Our big guy. I thought, I thought you were like beating him by like fifty. I was, but like I still don't feel good. Because yeah. Russell Wilson's got four points. You don't. You don't feel good until zero 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 on Monday night. Like I might be going in tomorrow's game with up forty, and he's still got Miles Sanders, Alshon Jeffrey, Zach Ertz. And so you the have. Giants need to. I, I only have Russell Wilson left tonight, but oh. I'm up right now. I'm up like 60, uh, 63. Well, and Wilson's only got four points. The Giants right? defense has been playing really well. So I I don't watch them anywhere near enough to even know if you're being sarcastic. 
They just, are atrocious. Okay. Well, I know they're I know they're terrible, but I know they're like they are actually a good run defense. defense. Not yes, yeah, exactly. Their run so defense I, I, I don't actually know. So yeah, they can't they can't cover a fucking nosebleed though. I can tell you that. I know it's bad. Your boy DeAndre Baker has been he's been bad, but atrocious. Uh, also, he definitely has talent. We saw there was a stretch in the beginning of the year, like three or four games. He was very good. <laughs> I'm serious. James Betch is an atrocious defensive coordinator. <laughs> just saying, you guys are sick. When we're in the playoffs next year, just feel <laughs> sick. See? Love to see you Bill hate, Belichick's coming home. You hate. <laughs> You are fucking so what? delusional. I had a dream. I don't care what I had. You had a wet dream about Bill Belichick, probably, you fucking weirdo. On uh, God. Let's keep this. Since God, we're talking about wet dreams and Bill Belichick, let's, all over. let's talk about busts, more busts that great, great Snacks segue. drafted in the E-Town get down. And that, oh, that God, include so many. Damien Williams and OJ Howard. So many. All right, can we talk? Oh, Damian you Williams. Sat, you sat next to me, and I literally said to you, I don't want to draft these guys. No, dude. Yeah, that's another lie that no, you're No, it's telling. not, Nick. Come on, stop it. You know I, I didn't want I wouldn't tell him. you what happened. And you this know is, I didn't want him. Listen. You know I didn't want him. <laughs> okay, listen. Listen, listen, listen. Just like last week when you told me you were going to take Dalvin Cook. That, and I, was, back that, to the that, I, was, I was really hoping Scott wouldn't pull that up. If you're going to pass by me, I wasn't doing it. I was going wire receiver, wire receiver, no matter what. We we're lucky we don't have any, any, any camera footage from this because we were both sitting there. It was round like seven. It was round, I think, round No, it was six, round five seven. with Damien and then round six I'm not with talking OJ. about Damien. I'm talking about OJ and Hunter Henry because those are the two guys we drafted. Yes. And we were talking about it and I was and we were both like, oh, we both need a tight end. And I was like, I'll get, I'm going to get my guy on my turn around. You're going to get your guy after it. And we both were like, yeah, this is cool because we got to wait on Hunter Henry, OJ Howard. No, because we were both excited about getting our tight ends later on in the drafts. So no, you were not. I was excited about where he fell. Yeah. I wasn't excited about getting him per se. We can go back to all the videos. I don't think I ever once touted him. Never once. Damian Williams, I'm pretty sure I didn't like him either. But where he was going, he fell to the fifth. I'm All like, right, let's talk about OJ Howard. What happened? Because he's still the same talented guy, but like <laughs> Bruce Arians came to town. You think that's it? He can't. So his walk. overall message for today's episode, just like coaching, just matters. Coaching matters. <laughs> coaching yeah, matters. Everything. I guess it's a big part of it. I mean, it's crazy though, because like coaching matters, but I I remember I had coaching a, matters except when it doesn't. I had yeah. an you entire know, thing about so hard to predict it's about Bruce Arians when he was uh the offensive coordinator of the Steelers, him and how um Yeah, I remember. What's his fucking name? Heath Miller. Heath Miller had like three great seasons with that was him. A decade ago. Yeah. But 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 like that's all you have to go off of know, stuff like this. Like I know. Bruce Arians, you're going off of stupid shit like that to try and predict they how also have Howard's going to... Right, absolutely. They also and have two very elite outside wide receivers, so... With coaches, it's... I, I think the best thing to do is look at the types of play calls they make and not necessarily try to dive so much into, like, oh, they throw to outside wide receivers on 40% of their plays and then tight ends on 15 and, you know, run... Like, yeah. it, it's more so, like, do they... Are they run heavy? Are they pass heavy? You know, are they aggressive? Things like that, and... Um, you know, substituting running backs in and shit, making it a committee. I think once you try to get like too, too in depth on the numbers, it, it's probably very hard to start predicting that. So, with OJ Howard, I mean, like, what are your thoughts on him long term, Dynasty? Don't I hate him, him, and I think don't love him. I think we all just completely whiffed on OJ Howard. I think if we go back and look at the tapes, I'd have to actually do this, but he, I don't think he was that good. No. Like he had. Maybe three games where he had like seventy-five yard touchdowns, and that was like his whole season. I, I well, he, he had a strong. And end we of all last saw year. like those yeah. couple. That's the thing. He always had a small sample size that kept you hanging on. Yeah. Right. Going back to college though, in Alabama, people loved him for his size and his speed, which he you know he tested off the charts at the combine. But he was never a big producer no. in college, and, and I, that yeah. should be a red flag. It should, but be, it's yeah. hard to look past that when you're an athletic freak like yes. thing. Well, because you're hoping that the professional coaches will be like, "This guy can fucking run fast," and like, well, "I'm gonna, ha I'm gonna have him run down the seam. Like, I'm gonna have him doing things that he should be doing." You would think that they would use him that way, and I was very, but you they know, don't. Instead, they just have thought, him fucking blocking and stupid shit in the box. Absolutely, and they throw to Cameron Brait. Yeah, yeah. So you would have thought with, with Bruce Arians coming in and him spreading that ball around. You would think he'd be offense. out there like a receiver. You would he'd, be thought, a third, yeah. he'd be a third. He'd be a third receiver out yeah. there. Is what he should be. Yeah. So and the, he's not. Yeah. It's it, yeah. It, it's crazy because Winston's having. He's going to have a, a monster year statistically. They're going to pass the ball at a at like an unprecedented rate. Yeah. So. Like OJ Howard on the Patriots right now. How good of a tight end do you think he would be? I don't think. I don't. Uh, I'm Brady not, can't, I they not can't that do excited anything. about it. Really? You don't no. think he'd be the, the second target on that team and be leading? Well, yeah, but I don't. I don't think he'd be that good. I, I think, think he'd be like a five for forty-five guy each each game, like game in and game uh, out. That's, that's more than he's doing now. That's about it. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely <laughs> more than he's doing now. He'd be more involved in the game plan. I think that's the other thing too. When you have Mike Evans and Chris Godwin eating up twenty targets combined yeah, per that's game, what I'm saying. You know, it's, it's like it's tough to find him the ball. Yeah, and James turning it over every other play. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. He fucking help to his fucking yeah. weapon. So I think it's a mix between the situation and maybe the fact that like people just wanted it to happen more than we should have 
kind of known that it maybe wasn't going to happen. Yeah. So I think it's just like, don't go nuts about, I guess, at athleticism. If we haven't actually seen someone produce over a longer period of time and really get it done on the football field. And same thing with Damian Williams. I still think he would have been a great play had he not gotten hurt. The thing with him was like he came in, and this was something you needed to know going into the season, was that he was on a short leash. Oh, easily. You know yeah, well, we year, had mentioned yeah. that. Yeah. This we, was his year. Before this, like you had said like you had liked him, but also he's on a short leash. So. It's like that's, that's the thing when you're drafting. It's like you have to take both sides. You can't just be like, I love this guy or hate this guy. You have to weigh the risk factors. And if it's yeah. like you love Damian Williams, but you know he's going to be on that short leash, and then maybe McCoy you only draft him in, in the third round. That was round my problem with round. Damian Williams. I yeah. didn't hate the talent. I hated the fact that I'd have to draft him in the second yeah. round. And, and a lot of people just ignored that. And, yeah. and, and that's no what I would have never done that. But when he kept going to the fifth, I didn't think I had fifth? a choice. Yeah, no, yeah, you got good, him in the fifth. That's fine. fine. I have a choice. It's probably fine with that's that. Not, but like, We're most, talking about regular ADP. Oh, most yeah. people got him in the late second. Or, you know, early Real third, bad. second, third. So at that point, at that price, I didn't want him. I wanted nothing to do with him. Over the yeah. long run, yeah, you look at them as like assets. It's like, yes, he was a second rounder, but you, oh, this new risk came into play, so you make it a third rounder. And if you do those with all the players you draft over four or five leagues, over the long run, you're going to you're gonna do well in your leagues. Like, that's the way you have to look at it when you're drafting. So Damian Williams, definitely a bust. Uh, we threw a couple other guys in here. I mean, A.J. Green, like, fuck A.J. Green. Yeah, yeah I mean, a bust because we told play. you to stay away from him forever. Yeah, so it's like fucking never like, never uh, Vance McDonald was a guy that everyone got really yeah. excited yep. about the tight end position. Another guy who was like athletic. I was all over him. We also don't know what would happen if uh, Big Ben stayed healthy. Yeah. So of course I'm not, not. No, I'm not going to so. go nuts about him. But also, again, like... I don't he's not like a guy who was drafted in like the third round. You know, he's a, no, he was but like he was, a, he, was a cons- he was a consensus breakout candidate. Yes. Yeah, and he was a guy who like people were thinking they could wait on tight end, get him later, and be like their tight end one. But, so. And, and so would you go-, go back to Vance next year with Big Ben coming back as maybe uh, you know you're in a twelve team league, you faded tight end, maybe as as yeah, the fading tight flyer end. tight end. Yeah. I'll go back to him. Yeah, I'll go back. I, to I'd him. give him a shot. Yeah, I, yeah. I think I'd go back to Vance as well. He is kind of old though, and he's got a uh, an yeah, injury history, but probably you know way way the goods with the bad, and then. Joe Mixon was a light. Uh, we have a couple other guys, I guess. Like Devontae Adams. Th- yeah. These guys. Have I been- wouldn't really consider him, though, just because he had the injury issue. Yeah, I think that's what it was. But, like, and as you know, as, as someone who drafted him in, in in the first round with your first pick, like, you would look back on it and be like, fuck. Yeah. yeah. Did you not know? get the return I wanted. Yeah. Yeah, but it wasn't. Yeah. I, I wouldn't know. I don't. I wouldn't go all out and say bust. I'd say he's he was a letdown. Yeah. I don't. I don't like putting injured players who miss it. Yeah. It's not really fair. Yeah, so but I would say like obviously you, you saw as soon as he came round. back, he you know well he, we're we're busting Saquon and Kamara. They were they were hurt, but, they, but they're playing different. though. They're not really missing games too much. Yeah, you know what I mean? Barkley missed what four games? Did he miss Devont- four? Yeah, yeah but even uh-huh. when he's like been in though, Devontae been missed what five? And those were all the games four I won. Yeah, but yeah, the games that Barkley's played, he's been bad. Sophomore, no, no, he had one good game. Yeah, so they're mixed up. Sophomore slump. Remember when I said that? Yes. Yeah, I got I guess you were right, but at the time I think that that thing just like came out of your mouth and you didn't even mean to say it it was just like a dumb piece of fucking analysis <laughs> yeah he he had no he had no like no, nothing like, to back it up the other guy who's kind of polarizing going into the year carry on johnson yeah so here's my here's it my thing. A shame that's a here's shame. my thing carry on is talented he's great but and i talked about this in depth like uh, i forget what video i did a couple weeks ago but here's the thing with carry on Matt Patricia, he's going to be someone that people want to draft again early next year. And I'll yeah. warn you right now, it's fucking December of 2019. Don't even touch him Don't think within the first it. four rounds. Here's what's going to happen. Matt Patricia, it took him a year and a half to start using carry on like a workhorse. He said for the first two years, we don't want to force him into a workhorse role because running backs, you know, basically are fragile and mm-hmm. we want to rotate players. Okay. And everyone right. was like, stop being a pussy. Like carry on so good, blah, 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 blah. Two years in a row. Forced him into a workhorse role two years in a row. He got proven right. Mm-hmm. Carry on got hurt. So do you think going into the third year that he's going to do that again? I can't trust him with the. There's no fucking save my shot. life. I so now you have the injury that. history. Now you have Matt Patricia, who's going to use running back by committee. There is no way that he gives Carry on Johnson a workhorse role again. So people hoping or wishing that the talent gets the gets the role, it's not going to happen. Yeah, no, Stay I'm away off. from Carrion as an early round pick. Fade, fade, yeah. fade. No for me. Fade. No for me. I'm 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 very interested to see where his ADP goes. I'm super super interested because I think people are going to take it out of control and just be like, "Oh, we saw it in like 3 games this year. He was really good." And everyone likes the talent, but listen, man, I'm I'm off him. I'm I also just traded him in one of my dynasty leagues, which I would suggest y'all doing as well because over the long run, I just I, I hate the position. That yeah, I in. just wouldn't even want to own Lions running backs at this point at all. When, yeah. it, comes to, when it comes to Dynasty, just just don't even give me a Lions running back. Yep. So that's basically all the busts we have. If we left any of them out, drop them down below in the uh, comment sections because I think we hit on mostly everybody. Yeah. Some are like borderline, like Patrick Mahomes, 
was also injured. He's been disappointing if you kind of jumped. I mean, if you're in a super flex and you picked him like top five, if you're in a one quarterback league and you jumped up to like the third round to grab him, you're probably disappointed between the injuries and just some of the games he's had have not been really good. So there's a lot of guys on like the borderline that we didn't really include. So y'all can uh, drop your thoughts and your comments and stuff down below. While you're down there, make sure you fucking hit that thumbs up button. If you appreciate the video, if you're getting some valuable information. Even if you're not. Out of your boys. Yeah, you're probably <laughs> not at this point, to be honest. But go follow us on Twitter as well. All of them will be fucking somewhere down here or up there. I don't know how this works. And the Fade the Public Twitter. Let's get into the herd. Yeah, yeah. Hurt, 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 hurt. Do we have any updates on the game? Still 21-3. to 3. We are at halftime. Chris People laughed at me for my pick this week of the Rams. Laughed at me. They laughed. They made a mockery of you. Laughed at me. I moved the line so much. Bet them at plus one Thursday night. You know what the closing line was? Calm down over there. Minus one. Move that line. Calm the Relax. fuck down. Relax. Chris Carson with 6.9 points at half that's that's time. that's good. It's not good. Shut I, up. It's really not bad. They're going to be dumping the ball off to him. They're down 18. It's done. It's okay. over. All right, here it goes. I have the 101. I'll start it's not it. the 101. The G01, and I will start it off. The herd of ghosts, for, y'all, for those of y'all that are new, is our uh, our Mount Rushmore, pretty much. We all pick a herd. It is. They're fucking goats. We pick the, one topic. The. The what? I can't wait to hear what you have to say. <laughs> you dumb motherfucker! Fuck! Go, Gio. Fuck! Gio one. It's a uh, Segway snacky. Yeah, Woo! Right. It's terrible. What? Gio one. Who's fucking? <laughs> How do you like it? You fucking cozy peasant. Not peasant ass Yannick Vatch peasant. Smoke George. more weed, animal. Hey, Scott. I'm, Seriously, I'm trying smoke to more talk. Weed. Smoke Not more weed, animal. Enough four o'clock games. There's never enough four o'clock games. It pisses me off. They as always East Coasters. They always as an East Coast person. Well, I mean, I mean, it's uh, the same thing, right? Same but like, thing, L- same LA gets games. games at ten o'clock and then they get them at one. So I don't know if they like that better or whatnot. Well, that we'll say afternoon games, the four o'clock games, late of games. Yes. Yeah, there's Fair. never enough games. There's no, always, I just, I just want to clarify. Get nine, that's ten, all. eight, nine, ten games going in the first, you know, the one o'clock games, or the ten o'clock games, whatever. And then you get two games half the time in the afternoon. Yeah. It drives me crazy. Yeah, it's not great. Because first of all, I'm watching the red zone. So now I got two. There's nothing going on. There's no action. And then I miss too much action because there's all the games were earlier in the day. Just even it out. I'll be honest with you. Just even I, it out a little bit. I don't even know. Yeah, it should be evened out a little more. But I it's think a little more. I think the one o'clock games give me so much fucking angst and anxiety that my energy is zapped by the four o'clock games. And I'm like, oh, I'm almost like done with football at this point. Yeah, because there's not I enough action. If, I don't know. I think there, yeah, I'm there's actually, too much action in the one. o'clock. I'm actually okay with. I don't. I know what you're saying, but I don't. I don't hate it because usually I the, like the one. The usually the four o'clock. I love like waking up I, and there just, needs to be at least four games during the four o'clock hour. I would do three I if like we three. have good matchups. Yeah, like. Yeah, well, Chiefs give us volume and then give us efficiency. That's what absolutely one o'clock yes. volume, four o'clock efficiency. If we get like, if Break. we get a good division, two good divisional games at four o'clock, great in the afternoon, great. I agree. I'm, I'm happy with that. But when they start throwing fucking shit ass games at us yeah. in the yeah, four like o'clock, we got the Steelers and the, the Cardinals, oh which my is God. Just, like, yeah. why are you gonna waste time? The with Chargers, that when we have Jaguars seven games at one o'clock. On. Yeah, yeah it's trash. there was one. There was three games in the afternoon slate, only one of which you actually wanted to watch. Actually wanted to watch. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so and like I get it, betting purposes, fantasy purposes, stuff like that. Every game matters, but come on, yeah. For the average fan, they don't want to watch bullshit. Go two, just Twitter (laughs) during football games. Now I don't know if all y'all have a Twitter, and again, if you do, make sure you're following us. But if you follow like the Twitter that I use, Nick underscore BDGE is strictly used for fantasy football, and probably tweeting at Zendaya. The people I follow are all fantasy football related, and they they literally are unfucking bearable during the games. If someone scores a touchdown, it's 15 people literally just tweeting out their fucking name. And I'm just like, okay, my my entire timeline is ruined for like the next 15 minutes. It's it's like no creativity. We have no fucking it's all just like groupthink. Everyone just does the same yeah. shit during the game. It's it just it's just unbearable. Every time somebody scores, it's the same fucking thing. It 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 it, it, it drives me fucking crazy. I don't yeah. know why. So I, try I don't to go off. on Twitter. Like if I have to Tweet something, I'll open it up, tweet it, and that's it. Close it. I don't scroll. I can't do it. No, it's so... I can't. It's, it's unbearable. It's so fucking bad. People are just so corny on Twitter, so I just hate... I think I just hate Twitter overall, to be I honest I was going to say, it you. sounds like you just got beef with Twitter. I just hate Twitter. Yeah, I do. I just hate... I hate social media. I hate all you guys. Not oh, you, dude, but I, I hate, hate you guys. I hate. I hate us, too. I hate myself. Yeah, so Hashtag that's where I'm at right now. freak athlete. It's trending. 
Okay, get a, get this off me. Get the spotlight off me. No steroids being allowed in the game of football. It's huge, I love, I love it. It's the best I'm, thing ever. We need to open up a steroid league. We really do. I'm I, all about like, it. Playma- I love Playmakers was on one of my... the best shows of all time. Oh, yeah. God, so good. And they were that... juicing the shit out of each other. They didn't allow it, though. They just yeah, did it. Yeah, nothing to do I mean, with it. I'm pretty I, sure I, that's I, like the NFL now. They weren't like why the NFL got rid of that show. Huh? It's like why that show got kicked off the air. Do you guys not have dirty socks if you wear white socks? Are they not dirty on the bottom? What do you mean? Like, okay, did you see the comments on last episode? No. Everyone's like talking shit about my socks because I was sitting like this, but Fuck I guess them. the bottom of my socks were they dirty. They like my socks. I'm just like, I don't understand. Like, I don't know. I feel like I run around outside all day. Yeah, my socks get dirty. Yeah, what the fuck? Yeah, so... I just I, know they're going to comment. No steroids allowed. You should juice these motherfuckers up and just let them go. I agree. Listen, I want to watch freak athletes who are stronger and bigger and faster than everyone you've ever seen before do amazing things that I can't do. I have an idea. That's what I want to say. If this video, If this video gets 750 likes... 750 thumbs up. All three of us will do a cycle of steroids in the off season. Deal. Ooh, deal. Deal. 750 deal. thumbs up and we're in. We'll deal. do it. Deal. Oh my God. I can't imagine deal. how psychotic I'm going to be. I know a guy. Go. Yeah. You'd be out of control. I would be out of control. You would get, you would get, you I'd would, have to do it not in football. Like you'd be so angry. Yeah. Oh, I feel like you would get horrible, like, like pimples all over your back. <laughs> you think? <laughs> you fucking think? I don't know why, but I know that would happen. All right. G01. Oh, oh, one. I am going with. Having free agency before the draft, I think it makes no fucking sense whatsoever. You're building a team. Everybody wants to build their team through the draft and then pick secondary pieces from free agency crop, right? It's pretty much what you want to do. That should be the goal. Winning teams build through free agency. They don't build uh, through the draft. They don't build through free agency. So to have free agency before the draft... Just idiotic in my mind. Idiotic. Has there ever been... This is a good point. I never really thought about this, to be honest. Is this like a thing that people talk about? Yeah, oh, yeah. Ever, people yeah. hate it. Have yeah. they ever... like? Has it has a league ever talked about actually doing I, Not anything that I know different? of. It just doesn't make sense to me. Yeah. That's yeah I mean, there's. I, you could argue for both. I and I guess the only thing that I like about having the free agency, like the way it is now, is that it just keeps like the, the action going. Well, I, So like, there's no like, fine. huge I get pause it. You, but between... You could move the draft up. Yeah. You could move yeah, but, everything up. Like, think about it like yeah, this. Think could. about it like this. The Jets, got, the Jets probably got really lucky. Two years ago, they were in the running to sign Kirk Cousins. Free agencies before the draft. They sang, signed Kirk Cousins. You don't have Sam Darnold, and the Jets are definitely not winning anything, yeah. and they have no future. So, of course, they avoided any catastrophe like that, but it just makes no sense. Have the draft before you want to go and handpick your players and who you want to give money to. That's a good point. I guess the problem with that is, though, it's going to be a... I don't want to say like a disadvantage, but it would probably hurt the players who are going into free agency because... yeah. That's the, I'm sure it's something with the CBA with all that. That's why Fine. it's the way it is. Because listen, like they these teams are yeah, gonna draft the, the rookie, guys. They would need to sw- they would need to fix the rookie contracts before yeah, they hundred percent. You know what I mean? Never yeah. do so they're because, loaded with a little bit more money. Yeah, on the rookies front end. are gonna be getting money, and these guys are free agents are trying to get. But paid. the guys that are getting top dollar are still co- like you're not getting. Yeah, a rookie's not gonna replace like say say DeAndre Hopkins hit the open market. A first round receiver is not gonna shy away a team that is a DeAndre, a DeAndre I mean, Hopkins. Receiver type away from winning Super Bowl. Draft, He's still going to get paid. If you're going to draft Jared Judy instead of paying DeAndre Hopkins what, what, $100 million, whoa, 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 no, 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 no. You, you're contradicting yourself because you always say, I don't know what that rookie's going to be. So who would you rather, DeAndre Hopkins or Jared Judy? DeAndre Hopkins, but it's different if beforehand. A philosophy, yes, I know, I'm saying, but I don't want you to say Beforehand, you know, it changes the strategy. But yeah, anyway, okay, I like so that. Either way, I think it's stupid. All I right, do. Oh, two. East Coasters. This is for y'all. The late games are too fucking late. Ugh. I spent the football season out on the West Coast, and it is fucking glorious. When the fuck did you do that? It is amazing. When I when I was in out San there Diego. for a few months. Oh, I was yeah, out in San Diego. Like, stupid like, bitch. <laughs> two years ago. <laughs> football was amazing out on the West Coast. Out here, y'all don't understand. Like, Sunday night's Monday night. Like, it's Sunday night, and we're all going to stay up to watch probably the second half of this game. Yeah, and we're not going to We're not going to be able to fucking go to sleep until, like, 1130. I'm exhausted right now, but my eyes will be peeled to the TV, and I'm like, I want to watch football, but I also don't want to hate my fucking life. Yeah, and then you get to, like, that point where, like, you— I got to hit a 7 o'clock train. You can't— I don't want to stay up. But I'm going to work at 7 a.m. tomorrow, but he's got to stay up till midnight. I'm going to—and in football season, you only get, what, two nights to sleep? Yeah. Tuesday and— Wednesday yes. during the work, during the week. So yeah, exactly. We have the Thursday night games are late. Sunday night games and Monday night games are late. Like move it up to move it up to a seven six, o'clock. Six, seven, yeah, o'clock. seven o'clock. Seven o'clock is perfect. fine because it's still four o'clock. On the I could go. To, I could go to bed happy at fuck ten. Fuck you, West Coasters. Yeah. To be honest, yo, no, fuck the West like, Coast. True. Pussy ass bitches. Fucking motherfucker. It's like a Tupac. Love you, Yannick. Nah, fuck y'all. Nah, I love Yannick. All right. Thatch is good guy. It's six fifty four where they are right now. Bullshit. 
I'm They're sitting down for dinner. I'm about to fall asleep on this podcast right now. We Damn, like my eyes are starting to bleed. The, so uh, late games on the East Coast fucking suck. Oh, the three. Oh, oh, three goes to me, and I am picking here. Don't, well, you like that? I know you like that no, shit. No, just do it. I know you like that shit. I'm going with the fact that the NFL sucks without fantasy football. Without fantasy football, the NFL is it's 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 trash. It's like, a sh- it's, like, I'm, uh, I'm not going to sit down and watch. I don't think that's watch. the way to put it, but I, the NFL product is horrible right now. It is really well, bad. The okay, product yeah. they're offering to the fans is awful. Like, if, if it wasn't the, for look, fantasy football, I would not watch any other game besides the Broncos, and look, that's it. Well, yeah, look at the top 10 draft order. They So many teams have, like, three wins. There's, there's what, a handful of teams that are, like, actually really good? Yeah. There's no... The parity is really bad. Yeah. I mean, it's really not, bad. I don't think that... I, I think it's more just the fact that Without fantasy football, the product is not really that well, interesting. Well, you have referees that are Other atrocious. than like your people who are fans of their teams, like you, you're not going to be like, oh, the fucking the well, referees are and atrocious, so and so are It's playing. like they're just slowing down the pace of the game between advertising and commercials and replaying Which every makes it fucking unwatchable. play. Yeah, it's and horrible. I think a few of those we might talk about later. It's, it's unwatchable. Like, I'm okay with a couple bad calls here and there. Like, yes, yeah, that, they're, that they're hurts, humans. but that's part they're of the humans, game. Yes. But yeah, but the fact that you need to stop it and then you're still getting all these calls fucking wrong. Yeah, right. You either do it's, one it's or the a, other. Like, it's, it's, I don't it's know. not. It's, and it's all, you're forgetting, you're forgetting gambling. People are always going to watch for gambling. Well, yeah, but I'm just talking about like the product, like the gambling. We're going, pro- that's not going to. bad. So basically, the, yeah. the herd topic is but things we hate about like football. Newer, right now, animals just like football. <laughs> yeah. That's really I mean, it. Just like the, hate the, football. Yeah, yeah the product I mean, is bad. AO1. Could be better, yeah. Uh, AO1, that's me again. Oh, God. I am going to go with, I guess it's kind of sticking on the same topic almost, but just the fact that You're consistent. the game is getting soft. It's getting soft. It's getting watered down. It's weak. You can't hit the quarterback. Okay, you can't boomer. hit anybody. <laughs> it's, it's, I hate that it's, joke, but it's 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 there. it's bad. It's really it makes it hard to watch. It's another thing where like every time the quarterback gets hit, you're you're almost rooting for like you're almost sitting there going, oh, we're from the passer because now like yeah, I want my team to get those it, calls. Yeah. And we like, saw a few big hits today, and we're like, oh, yo, yeah, wait, 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 where's the fucking flag? And exactly. Ninety nine percent of the time, it comes it out. Now at this yeah. time, yeah. and it, it's ruining it because it's you, you ruin big plays. You ruin all these things that you know. Make the game exciting. And now every time something happens, you're worried that like, oh shit, did my team just give up a fucking penalty at the end of the game? It's going to ruin us. Like yep. we, like, that happened in Denver with it's, a... It's killing the orgasm. Yeah. Bro. It really is. It's just... It's having to pull out. We, we just... Sick. Listen, they, they're too much involved in player safety. A human being will get concussed at 60 Gs. A common head-to-head contact on a football field? 100 Gs. By my calculations... Mike Webster sustained more than 70,000 blows to his head. But I am telling you that playing football killed Mike Webster. And people are going to say, oh, Animal, how could you say that? Well, listen, these guys are getting paid millions of dollars to entertain me. They're getting paid money to entertain me. This is all about Animal. And I don't give a shit if they get hurt or not. He does. He does. I like, listen, it happens. I feel bad. I don't want anyone to get hurt. But if they do get hurt, they know. They know the risk. That's why they're getting paid all this money. They know it's what fair. they are going to do. They know what's going to happen. They know what could happen. Make it fun for me to watch. That's I don't it. know if that it's... I want people getting hit. Football, I don't think football is, is pertained to entertaining us. It is 100% it's an entertainment. It's all it I is. I think it is. It's sports they're, entertainment. It's, jo- it's not sports entertainment. If there was no WWE fans, there would be no football. Okay, but if there was no fans, there'd be no football. I mean, I, under- People, I completely like, understand your point. Not going to just entertainment. play football. I'm not saying it's not. I'm just saying I don't think that's the end. Of, this is their jobs. Yeah, and if without us, they don't have it. Yes, I understand. Well, not I even that. Just that like this being- is their jobs. Like you know, your job is dangerous. I knew the risk when I took this job. That's sure. why you're getting paid a lot of money to well, do it. In, in their, I don't. In, in their defense, it's not. It's not the players who are like, we need to make this safer. Oh, the but players it hate it too. It's part of the players. Yeah, mm-hmm. definitely. It's like Tom Brady. It's like four quarterbacks. And Odell, he's a pussy. Well, he's such a pussy. Just the overall, so I feel like guys used to play like guys used to be like built stronger or something too. I don't know how. Well, that's like, why everyone's I mean, just steroids. like, it's a league. It's a league finally everyone's getting pushed like back hurt. about all the fucking research they're doing on CTE. I well, mean, that's the the concussion thing is, is just that's gonna be a monster problem in ten years. Yeah, like oh, once yeah. they actually have concrete research and they're like, yo, half the players are gonna be fucking. Yeah, but there I shouldn't fear be a there may not be football. I, I, uh, that's a legitimate fear I, for me too. Yeah, I fear about that, which is but, why we're pivoting away from football soon. Five years, we're done. We're done. We're moving to fucking golf, fucking fantasy, to, fantasy drinking or something. Go, yeah, fantasy drinking. Oh god, the most, gets the most pointed shit. We'll be so, the number one analyst in the game. Fuck yeah, let's go. A O two. Uh, so animal, you don't. Depending on what happens tonight, you might not fit into this category. But 
I lost. This is fantasy football related. Missing the playoffs. I had a bunch of y'all tweet at me this week when you're like number one or two or even like three. If you're basically in any spot that should be in the playoffs points wise, like you, the, your, your playoff system gets the top four teams in and your top four in points scored and you don't make it, that fucking sucks. Or having someone who's like eighth in points. No, they just get lucky matchups every week, ninth in points, but they end up in the playoffs somehow because of they were playing shitty teams each week, and that's just how it worked out. That shit hurted. Yeah, it's really bad. And you know what? You were the one a few years ago when you first came here that suggested we do that, the fourth place. I am 100% okay with going back to that. That's also, it, that just makes fantasy fun, though. Like, I hate it. It's a good rule. I hate it when it happens to me, but I love it when it happens to you. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it, it's, like, fun, but it also sucks at the yeah. same time. I also love that I, when we were talking about, like, new league changes. I think I was a big fan of the you play everybody one. So I hate that rule. Points actually matter. That's like week. such a soft pussification thing. It's like, I right, know. Let's, I, I, let's make it fair for I everybody. Would've, I would've, so, like, I everyone can play everyone the same time. I and probably it's even. wouldn't vote for it because so, I love a head to head matchup. Such but soft I think with the bullshit. points, it's got to be something a little bit better. Like, no, you just play. You play shit. the person you play that you week, and that's it. Anything. You deserve. You deserve. Nobody a lot deserves of anything. Nobody deserves anything. You just go and take what you need and get, and that's it. You play the guy in front of you, and you either win or you lose, and that's it. All right. that, brother. Fucking pussy ass. Soft fucking. Give me that. Give me that. Soft society. Come on, come on. All right, AO3. Uh, yeah, AO3. Well, this is, is just going to continue on okay. the shitty, like. Yeah. So let's move through it quickly. Pass interference rule should not being be a reviewable. rule. Being reviewable. It is the stupidest thing. There's no consistency with it. It's clear and evident when we watch slow motion replays that the guy is getting his hands hit and he's getting tackled before the ball gets there mm -hmm. and they still say, not pass interference. It makes no sense. It's just one of those Should've rules never that's like happen. you could really call it on almost every play. Yeah. Right. It's like if they were be able, be able to review holding. They right. just did you it so, the, find holding so the Saints play. fans would shut the fuck up. And, and, that's, it, it's, and that's it. It's a and terrible. They, they did a horrible It was a terrible reactionary idea for them to, to implement this year. It's so been bad. awful. Yeah. Well, I think that's a big problem with the NFL as a whole is just they're constantly trying to make the game better when I think the game's been fine for years. But that Jared, contradicts what you're Jared saying. Jared Goff just a pick six. What do you mean? Really? Mm-hmm. Carson's off the field now. How does that contradict what I've been saying? Because you haven't been entertained. You said football's been great for years, but so, you haven't been entertained. Well, now it's, yeah, for, for the past couple of years, it's, it's been shit. It's exactly exactly what I said. Well, saying, I, I, they've I had a good product, and they, every year they add these new shit rules, and they're ruining it every year. But they're just trying, like, they're micromanaging it. I think this one now, too they're much. under the Too much so. They're under the microscope now more than ever because- They social, had to do something. Because of like social media. Well, oh, Every yeah. time something happens, it's like the entire world has an opinion on it. So they hear, instead of, you know, like three general executive opinions, they hear five million people just yelling people at like, them. Those all are all right. stupid people. <clears throat> yeah. No, I mean, I agree, but like, is your, are you going to be like, this? my opinion is the the good opinion here? I mean, in this case, yeah. <laughs> Love that. All right. I, I agree with you, Animal. TO1. TO1. I agree with you, Animal. <laughs> so third and long penalties. And I don't mean like obvious ones where you get it, something like that. A quarterback's rolling to the right on third and 15, and he's throwing it to the right, but they call an illegal contact, which is five, yard, five yards on the other side of the field, you get an automatic first down. It I wasn't think anywhere it near is, the play. I think it is a travesty. A travesty. So you're saying you need more context behind penalties? Absolutely, 110%. Or I don't think it should be an automatic first down yeah. I, I, at all. That's just me. Why? Why isn't it? Yeah. Every defensive penalty is an automatic first down, except for offsides. Why well, is that an automatic first down? tailored for the offense. 100%. It's, but, it's, but it's always been like that. I know. It's so well, when they're making stupid. it more and more. It is. It is terrible. Terrible. And why, when an offense, when it, when an offense has a huge play and they have offsetting penalties, but the defense committed a fifteen yarder and the offense committed a five yarder, it why offsets. Still offsetting. Yeah. Stupid. There, there should be a middle ground. Make it a ten yard penalty or something. Re Run the next down, whatever the case. Yeah. It pisses me off. It's dumb. It's dumb. You know what else is fucking dumb? Quarterbacks who go nuts pre-snap. You see it like Phillip Rivers does this all the time. Ugh. It's like they're at the He's line. The worst, and man. then all of a sudden, they act like they see something. Like they see the linebacker having mm -hmm. a fucking seizure or something. So like, horrible, horrible. We got to run to the fucking left side where that linebacker is. And then the fucking running back gets nailed in the backfield <laughs> for like a negative three-yard play. I'm just like, what the fuck did you just see to go nuts I about? I want to know what you saw that made you fucking waste 10 seconds to change that audible. Yeah. And like, have your running back run fucking right into this the This always happens. Like, they think they see something in the defense, and then the play they just audible to is, is, is fucking miserable. I don't know why that makes me so angry, but it really does. So that is yeah. my fucking TO2. Bad. No, I, I, I respect bad, that. Bad, bad, bad. I respect that. TO3. TO3, I'll end strong for us here with a little... No, uh, 
the the obvious reviews that just take way too long. The refs, you'll see it like like fans can make it. Yeah, fans like can make the call in five seconds. Exactly. Like you see, like oh, was it a catch or not? Like they rule like incomplete, and then you see like on the, the they, they go right to the play. You see it, it was clearly a catch, yeah. and then they're like, oh, we're gonna have to review it, and everyone knows it was a catch. The whole world can see it. The announcers are going, that's definitely a catch. They're going to rule the catch. They bring in Gene Sterator and oh, Dean Blandino God. and all these fucking people. <laughs> and they get it wrong. And I see, you know, yeah. that, and then, that's got to be an honorable mention. They have these official announcers and well, now never, analyzing these calls. And NFL, they're so bad. Does NFL ever get embarrassed by that? Like, what do you, it's like a clown uh, show. Remember, exactly. The, the, the carry guy, remember a few years ago, I think he's he's gone. They replaced him with Sterator. He was a fucking, he's a god. But um, something carry, he was wrong on every single, <laughs> yeah, every single it's call. Just you can tell those so guys annoying. who keep getting it wrong, they get like really hesitant now on TV. It's, when they're like, I, uh, I, yeah. I think it should be like this. But it's like, always, I think they're always like, at this point, like who really knows? Yeah, it's like, I don't even know how they're going to call it. Which which should tell you about the fucking problem that they have. Is, That's a huge problem. There's no consistency. If they're so, sitting there watching replay after replay after replay of the same thing and they can't give you a clear cut thing and these are supposed to be the top experts of their field, so I think that's a problem. Also though, some of the long ones that like they'll they'll get obvious ones quickly but they have to go back and make sure they have the time right. In the yard. The yeah, but still, it takes like fucking four minutes. That shouldn't yeah, take no, that yeah, long. No, it Way too long. Like, that's like to go put 11 seconds back on the clock. Yeah. No, like, just terrible. look at when he fucking went out of bounds. Or when the play was really dead. Like, yeah. when's the ball? All right. Uh, oh, there. Okay. It shouldn't right. take that long. As far as I'm concerned, like, the NFL should consult with us because that, I agree. Was, that was a beautiful goal. I agree. Her, and there's one more, too, I hate because there's go. so many. But this one, I didn't even write down. I forgot about it. The you, fact that official. You don't get an extra the, one. The fact Wait, that on. the official uses his eyeballs, his eyeballs when the punt is in the air to determine exactly where the ball goes. That is true. There is no that way is in hell true. that oh, is well, ever yeah. accurate, ever. I've never thought about ever. that. Ever. That's ridiculous. Like, are oh, you yeah. kidding me? They just yeah. really need a, a sky cam that can just... Right. It's 2009 We need a sky ref. Team. That's what we need. We need a sky ref. Oh, you know what also, like, pisses me off? I'm just going to throw it out there, too. It's just, like, how every player... Like, players don't realize that there's 17,000 cameras on them at all times. So when they, like, catch a ball, but they know it hits the ground yeah. and they get it, or yeah. all the defensive players are like, hit the yeah, ground no, when it's no. clearly a catch. It's like, yep. yo, there's 52 cameras from Shut up. 200 like, angles that are going to get like, right. Wait, you're just a liar. Like, wait, he said up. it was down. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, oh, since you did that, you know yeah. what? I'm actually going to call it that way. Yeah. So shut your no, fucking mouth. that drives mouth. me crazy. All right, well, that's our uh, Herd of Goats. So make sure you comment down below. Let us know uh, on Twitter, too. You could tweet at us. We'll put up a poll. So make sure you're following us there. Let us know in the comments down below uh, who you thought won that Herd of Goats. We will link it in the description as well as in the comment section. Each one of our personal Personal, personal selections. Uh, that was a, that was a pretty good one. I like that, that was. One. That I like that. So a give lot. us uh, some more suggestions. And that could have went a lot longer. Yeah, well. then there's, there's probably I probably could rattle off five more. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. at the end there Easy. we just started thinking things that pissed us off. Yeah. We just kept rolling. So we're gonna do one of those herd of goats probably when we hit the off season. We'll probably do one of those like every single week. They're not always gonna be football related. So no. Probably sure most of, most of the time they're not going to be football related. So let's uh, let's end this this uh, episode let's real quick with the Patreon questions. Lots of emotions tonight. I had to sweat it out all the way till the end, but I fucking did it. I'm in. I, I needed this after last after last year after last season. The way that that ended for it to go for me to go down like that. I needed to be back in the playoffs. I needed a redemption shot. I'm happy to be in. We didn't get to talk about it on FTP because we didn't know what the outcome was gonna be, but I'm fucking in. Don't fade, animal. Let's go. I need, I need you guys to root for me. I need some people to root for me. Give me some comments below. Give me something. Let me know you're with me. Let me know you're with me. Let's go. Let's go. Joel702, what up? Nick, when you coming out to Vegas, I live out here. I love you, animal, and fuck you, snacks. Just kidding. Yeah, baby. But fly, eagles, fly. Uh, I think so, that's why I said fuck you, snacks. Yeah. I'll be, uh, I'll be out in Vegas for one or two days. In January, I'll be in Florida from January uh, 10th, maybe, to the 13th, I think. And then New Orleans for the NCAA football championship game, whatever that Monday is, possibly with snack. Did you figure out? You said tonight, you know. Yeah, I haven't figured it out yet. Fucking figure it well, out. We're going to have to, you're gonna have to uh, I don't know. I'm going to talk about it. Well, you, I mean, you got to tell me more about the guy and the, the and the. Uh, what do you mean I got to tell you more about the guy and the. the, the, the you got to tell me more about the guy and what, what he's going to bring to the table for us. <sighs> All right. The well, guy the, the, that we're okay. meeting with. Whatever. Tell Kirsten to text me. I'll tell her the deal. I know. I so know. So I'll, I'll be out in, uh, we'll be out in New Orleans for the NTA championship game. And then I'll probably stay there from the 13th to the 14th. And then Vegas. Baby Vegas. Fort, you should come with me after that. that. Was 14th Stop. to the 15th. 
Uh, there is a fantasy sports association or some shit conference going on there. I actually just texted Andy from the footballers today and he said he'll be there. So I'll probably link up with him as well as some of our other uh, partners because a lot of people in the industry will be uh, out there. So I'll be in Vegas for like one day, one night or something. So if you got like a fucking uh, hookup out there, I will be in contact, Joel. Scott, best movie that should have never had a sequel. Is it Karate Kid, The Matrix, or other? It is uh, Harold and Kumar go to White Castle. No, Should no. not have fucking That's made that sequel. That's not true. No, Guantanamo really? Bay is funnier. Bad. You're right. Oh, whoa. Calm down. I Guantanamo think, Bay I was think it's funnier. It's not funnier. It's a fact. That's Maybe a fact. recency bias because I watched funnier. it like two weeks ago. But I'm that gonna, movie it is a good movie. Right, I'd probably right. say like Anchorman 2. Well, I didn't even bother watching it. Anchorman the first. Well, exactly. And like Zoolander 2. I didn't watch Zoolander 2, but I'm assuming that was also. I watched like 15 minutes. I was like, fuck, this is. I'm mad that they made this. Didn't they make a second Grease? Because they remade Grease? Yeah, but like the first Zoolander was fucking. It's a classic. It's so good. So funny. Yeah, yeah. Great quotes. I forgot they made. See, that's how irrelevant it is. Exactly. It should have never been made. Just never. That's a great question. Honestly, I, I would need more time to think about it. Yeah, there's, there's that was yeah, those are like so, the first two. I don't know why Harold and Kumar came to mind within one second. That yeah, was see, ridiculous. I, I, yeah. Harold Kumar, I think all those were pretty good. They were. The, the, the Christmas, Christmas one at the was end pretty was, funny, uh, too. Yeah, but like, you funny, know what you're weird. getting. Like You're not Jared expecting. Yeah. Back, ladies and gentlemen. You know, Terrence Tubbs. Don't tell me another cup touchdown. No, uh, but he... he Threw another pick. <laughs> oh, that's what he meant by back. <laughs> no. He was playing uh, so well. Terrence Subs, I think it's, I think it's, I think it. So I want to see what you guys think. Does Nick look a little like white Tommy Fam? He's an outfielder for the first Tampa, Bay Rays. Tampa Bay Rays. I could see it. I don't Dude, know. I don't know. Baseball. I know who it is. Let me look that up real quick. I could see it. I probably have to look it up, but I I can get where he's going with it. <laughs> he's, I mean, <laughs> I guess I know why he said white Tommy Fan because he's black. No, he's, I think nah, he's Dominican. He's, he's like the Nah, he's not. I, he's, I think he's half and half. I feel like you... I don't know if I could say... Like, you I mean, can't, maybe like, if this say, guy had some glasses on, it would be easier to tell. Or I could take mine off. Nah, just put them back on. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that was weird. I, I don't think I've seen you without glasses since Vietnam. Yeah, I, I always wear them now. I should probably wear mine. I can't see so, shit. So, I don't know. I'll you get, have to I'll ask other people. Uh, I'm buying a ring for the girlfriend tomorrow. What last words do you have for me? Don't do it. Me? Yeah, yeah, don't. don't. Stop. Um, Congratulations, Justin. Where are you awesome. from, Justin? If you're in the New York area, my best friend Steve works at Tiffany's and could probably get you a nice discount or sale. Just all we were his best Just friends. a ring. But <laughs> since, yeah, but since you're uh, already buying it tomorrow, I'm sure you already have, like, you know what you're getting. Yeah. Uh, Good luck, man. Words. That's awesome. Congratulations. I hope she says yes. Oh, yeah. Big. Well, uh, actually, for you, I hope she says big, no. So yeah, let good. us know. Let us know what happens. I hope you've accomplished everything you want in life, to be honest. Yeah, because it's over now. All right. Or I hope she's a partner that encourages you to accomplish everything you want. I'm sure she's very pretty. Send, send, us, send, us some, send us some pictures send after us it some happens. News, yeah. Well, uh, of you, not rude. of her. Yeah. George. 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 Oh, someone. This is good. I'm sorry. Um, Justin Lance. You know George's comments on his don't do it. Oh, I didn't Nick see Nick I, I turned 21 in a month. I'm obviously going to AC, but where else in Jersey should I be going? Emerson Hotel. No. <laughs> Hoboken. Go, go to Belmar. Go, wait till the summer. Well, wait, yeah, you can't. You wait till can't, the summer. Yeah. Go to Belmar. Hoboken's great. Uh, Hoboken's not great. Don't this go to, it is? Hoboken's, Hoboken's great? like very average. For a kid that's just turning 21? It's fun. It's not great. It's, I literally had the best time in my life in Hoboken when I was like 21. That's, that's when I had. When yeah. I was 20. That's, that's so sad. When I was 20, I had a fake ID. I had Gianni. Now I don't want to go. I had Gianni. But when I was 21, ID. I wanted to go. Hoboken's was, fun time. Yeah, it's fun. For, um, be, for 21. Come to Brooklyn. Come hang out with no, me. No, don't go to Brooklyn. Are you shitting me? Don't go to Brooklyn. You don't know Brooklyn. I know Brooklyn. You I've know, been there longer than you. You know, you only know where Kristen lives. <laughs> That's not true. I've been in Brooklyn. You don't know where, you don't know the popping parts of Brooklyn. Sure I do. Get the fuck out of here. It's not just George, any ideas expanding the brand outside of fantasy football? Yes. Yeah, yeah bars. Like dominatrix shit. We're going to open up. Uh, <laughs> like my, literally, one of my biggest fears is like S&M stuff. Like, Wait, like, like us becoming that? Or no, like just well, in general? Yeah, that wouldn't, that wouldn't really be a thing that I would oh, like I was gonna but put you in lo- in head of that division like just like waking up tied like with like leather and shit like that it's a big fear right, enough please it's I, a, I, I try to stop pitching this. <laughs> it's really funny like thinking about how people have fetishes I don't like want that. to picture this yeah. it's like I'm so the opposite and yeah people, like, you know, like people like a, like pro, like snacks probably has a weird fetish that will I never want to know about but you know the, you just walk <laughs> around and people like really like yeah. weird shit I'm just like I'm a pretty normal fucking yeah dude I just in like, bed, like you know what I mean I just like busting nuts. Stuff, like, yeah, like, I'm a pretty normal guy. Sex, like hand jobs, blow like jobs. Sex, cash yeah. and checks, busting you know, nuts. Good snacks is all quiet over there because he's like, I'm not even going to let them in on what I'm thinking right now. <laughs> Bro, I'm <laughs> booking it out of here. You're not even going to ask me. <laughs> so expanding the brand outside of fantasy. Yeah, I actually, I talked about this really briefly in the vlog. I, uh, I'm eventually going to pivot towards, not completely go away. I don't know what my role will be within the fantasy sphere of like big dogs, but I definitely want to pivot towards more of a, of uh, like a, creative space where almost like 
what, what's the word for it? Like where you get entrepreneurs in a space together. Incubator. It, there's like collaboration. A no, like that. That's what I've been using. But there's like an actual word for it, like a uh, incubator. I tried where they. It's like not groom them, but ecosystem. I, yeah, so that's like the. the there's like a. I know what you're trying. There's to like say, a business like word a, for it. I can't remember. Incubator. But I would. I would like to pivot towards more. Maybe like a marketing agency in a sense for social media. Big dogs got to entertain. Big dogs got it. That's pretty good. It would be like BDG like, media terrible. or something yeah. like that. But um, terrible. You're yeah. fired. It will be something more towards company, like right. the business creative entrepreneur side of things and helping other people grow. Big dogs got to entrepreneur. All right. <laughs> Big dogs got to earn. Yeah. Yeah. We'll just change the company every year and become something else. <laughs> yeah. All right, Georgie, Georgie. You All right, George, so, another question. What is your ba- your best late round draft pick this year? Any of your leagues? That's a good question. That is a good question. Uh, I have to think about that. I look at my team right now. Well, Melvin Gordon in the tenth of the yeah. get down was fantastic because he came back very yeah. early. In like, the NYC league, uh, I absolutely nailed like every pick from eighth round towards. Fucking, yeah, strong. It was like strong, it was like man. Allen Robinson, fucking Cortland Sutton, uh, just like all guys like that that just kept falling from like uh, Austin Hooper in like the twelfth round of that league was absolutely killer while he was still alive. I feel like there's probably one of us probably hit on like a really late late round pick that was like real nice. But I guess none of you guys I, drafted any team, so I'll just keep going. I haven't. I don't have it. Like well, I, I pretty much had my you whole just, team. You just sucked everywhere. Yeah, you I didn't make any good draft. Just picks. had the same had team from the start. My early picks were good, and then just like free agency. Yeah, George, That's you also I let me my, get my uh, Cortland Sutton in the tenth round of our dynasty league. You also let me get Austin Eckler in like the thirteenth or fourteenth round. Um, so did you two. So thank you all for. For that and George, thank you for your question. You have another fucking one. Rank these cinematic classics: Godfather Two, Pulp Fiction, Bloodsport. In that okay, order, so we know Blood. No, Bloodsport's not on that. Well, list. I mean, it's right, it's sitting right there, so you have to put it. But Bloodsport Blood's, is not even remotely. Bloodsport's close, on the it? waiver wire. Bloodsport, Pulp Fiction, Godfather Two. Right, see, you know what? End the show. That's it. I'm done. I'm not doing anything. Can I be honest? That. I've never seen Godfather Two. What? I've never seen Godfather. They're, what? It's, it's overrated. I mean, no, it's really it's, good. I it love is. That. I love it's that. A, dude, don't even. Godfather Two's overrated. Godfather is. It's a very good. Movie, but it's not like it's it's good. It's just, Max, it's, that's because you're a fake Italian Jew. Okay, first of you all, don't understand. First of all, it. fake Italian. The whole Godfather, the whole thing is all fake Italian. All right. <laughs> so he probably that's, the whole very thing well. is like all Hollywooded up. That's why it's it's over it's overrated movie. No, it's, it's very not. good. The Godfather but is it's phenomenal. Slow Godfather and slow two overrated. is overrated. They call that like the greatest movie ever. It's not. No. Godfather is better than the second one. So in in my opinion, it's Pulp Fiction and the other. Pulp two are, Fiction's amazing. Are well, you saw some Bloodsport. You got a little taste. You got a little. And it was so. Do you want me to get? You want me to still give? a ranking after what I saw from that? What'd you think? Fucking, they're on the waiver wire. Is that, is that what, from ranked. what you saw, so, so you're telling you saw, me, I don't even remember what, from so what you're you saw, thinking about you consider that the worst movie you've ever seen in your life? Easily. Yeah. It's not close. I saw 30 seconds and I almost killed him. It's literally a fucking true story about American Hero. See what you know I got what else here? is a true story about American Hero? This podcast is over. Harold and Kumar go to White Castle. That motherfuckers are heroes. And then they make. escape, escape Guantanamo Bay. Yeah, like that's incredible. I'm trying to go to... You want to go to Guantanamo Bay after New Orleans? As long as uh, Big Bob's not there. Big Bob, cock meat sandwich. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're Boom! out. I don't even know what else to say because we've been doing this for way too long. Goodbye, good night. See you next week.